We stand for our invocation led by Dr. Alan Floyd, Cottage Hill Baptist Church, and remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance. Let's take a moment and pray together. Heavenly Father, we first want to thank you for your abundant blessings. We thank you for life itself and for the measure of health that we need to fulfill our callings for sustenance and for friendship. We thank you for the, the ability to be involved in useful work and for the honor of bearing these many responsibilities. We thank you today for the freedom to embrace you and even to reject you. We thank you for loving us so from your sovereign and your gracious nature. In your word, you have said that citizens ought to obey the uh, governing authorities since you've established those very authorities to promote peace and order and justice. So today we come and we pray for these in this room today, for these city officials. And I'm praying today that you would grant unto them wisdom to govern amidst the conflicting interests and issues of our times and even in our city. We pray for a sense of welfare in the meeting of the true needs of the people. Pray for a thirst for justice and rightness, courage and strength to do what is good and fitting. I pray today for the ability to work together in harmony, even when there is honest disagreement. Pray for peace in their lives and joy in their work. I pray for the agenda set before them today. Give them an assurance of what must please you and what would benefit those who live and work in our great city of Mobile. And we pray this in Christ's name. Amen. Thank you. Roll call, Vice President Manzi. Here. Councilmember Richardson. Here. Councilmember Small. Here. Councilmember Williams. Here. Councilmember Daves. Here. Councilmember Rich. Here. Councilmember Gregory. Here. Statement of rules. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Certainly glad to see each and every one of you in an unusual place, but I ask that you to bear with me as we work through some of these difficulties. Statement of rules. We ask that you turn off all electronic devices before or upon entering the meeting. Any person desiring to address the council must sign in, indicating the resolution, ordinance, appeal, or public hearing agenda item before entering the meeting. When addressing the council, the speaker must state his or her name and address. Any person desiring to speak to the council on a non-agenda item must contact the city clerk's office no later than 2 p.m on the Thursday prior to the city council meeting. The subject he or she wishes to address must be identified and pertain to city mobile business. Any person who has not given proper notice to the clerk's office and wishes to speak on another agenda item will not be allowed to address the council. We allow each speaker five minutes. A bell will sound to indicate the end of four minutes. One minute remains for summarizing. The second bell indicates that your time has expired. When addressing the council, there is to be no ad personal address to any individual council member. <coughs> All statements are to be made to the chair who will recognize any council member who wishes to respond. Lastly, we ask that in order to maintain decorum, that there be no undue applause and or public outcry during today's council meeting. Thank you. Approval of minutes of January 9th. So moved. moved. Second. Public motion is second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Minutes are approved. Communications from the mayor. Well, good morning. Good morning. Good to see everybody here this morning. We have some special guests who we're honoring today. Being a city of champions, it should not come as a surprise that we have the seniors from St. Paul's Episcopal School that recently won the 5A state championship uh, by beating Broward Christian 17-14. I had an opportunity to visit with the team for a few moments in the conference room adjacent to my office. 
found out that there are some aspiring Division I players among them, uh, which I think that we'll probably be reading about uh, some of their exploits on the field. Certainly we hope to be reading about their exploits on the field uh, going forward. Uh, also, uh, as I scanned the list, I noticed that as I was looking at the names, I noticed that there was a Cole Amberger. Uh. I don't know but one Amberger in the city of Mobile. Now I know two. I know Nick and Cole. Cole, where are you? Stand up, please. Yeah. Everybody knows who Nick Amberger is. <laughs> so thank you, Cole. But I do have a proclamation that I would like to read. And really, this is not just to honor this team. Obviously, that's why they're here today. But it's just to make us all reflect on the positive things that occur through athletics and getting our young people involved and staying involved in sports. Coach Mask, during his tenure at St. Paul's, has done a terrific job. And so, Coach, we're tremendously grateful for your leadership. And the proclamation reads, whereas the St. Paul's Saints defeated Brywood Christian 17-14 to claim victory in the State 5A Championship, and whereas the hard work and dedication of this team and coaching staff has brought honor and notoriety to the city and to the school, and whereas the city benefits greatly from the team's spirit and cooperation of young people, especially when they are competitive statewide, and whereas we should recognize superior achievement and athletic competition to further encourage excellence in teamwork and resilience, now, therefore, I, William S. Stimson, the 108th mayor of the city of Mobile, Alabama, do hereby congratulate the St. Paul Saints upon their victory and encourage their continued success in life. Done at the city of Mobile, uh, the 16th day of January 2018. Coach Mask, if you meet me at the podium. I would, thank you. Mayor Stimson, City Council, thank you all for honoring us this morning. It's an honor for us to be here to represent St. Paul's Episcopal School, our administration, our faculty, our staff, everybody, our parents, everybody connected with our program. It is indeed a pleasure to honor these guys. I would like to state publicly it would be a tremendous loss for us as they move forward, but they'll be outstanding citizens in, in the state of Alabama as well as in Mobile. They've had tremendous accomplishments by winning three out of the last four five A state championships as a senior class, three state championships in, in four years is pretty remarkable. And uh, to those guys, we give all the, the glory and the honor. They deserved it, we're very proud of them. So thank you again for having us, and we look forward to being back here again one day. Okay? Co Coach, could we have the seniors stand, please? Yeah. Sir, could we have the seniors they're stand? They're all seniors. Oh, they're all seniors. Oh, okay. oh, we're graduating senior. 25 seniors. Oh, 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 oh my goodness, they all stand. <laughs> Okay, anything else? <laughs> well, okay, with y'all permission. I did want to add, Coach, that uh, you all live in my district, so I'm your representative for St. Paul's, so a special congratulations from me and everyone in District 7. So thanks, and gosh, I didn't realize these were all your seniors, and they're I all did. leaving. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I bet you did. I realized it a long time ago, but, <laughs> oh, but it's oh all goodness. good. We'll, we'll continue to carry on. Yeah, Thank well, you all again. in the future years, yeah. Mr. Your Chairman, permission, we need to escape and uh, go back to class. Yes, sir. I was just going to tell the chairman that I, uh, my eyesight sometimes fails me, and I don't recognize kids as they grow up, but one in the middle, back row, red hair, Gordo, you're no stranger to championships. Congratulations. Good to see you. Okay. Thank you all. We're going to get back to school if it's okay with you all. Yes, sir. Thank you all. Have a great day. Thank you, Mr. Thank you. Yesterday I had the opportunity of um, participating in many of the Martin Luther King Day celebrations throughout the city. Um, you know, our vision remains to unite our city by celebrating the diversity of our citizens and creating equity in all of our communities. I certainly think that's in keeping with what Dr. King uh, preached uh, during his life. And so it's an honor as the mayor to represent the city and participate in those. I would point out that during yesterday's ecumenical, all faith ecumenical service, which was the very last event that we had, there was a stray puppy 
a Labrador puppy that showed up. And the puppy was put in somebody's utility trailer that just had sides on it. And while the choir was singing, while many of the prayers were being delivered, the puppy kept yapping, as puppies would do. And I kept thinking, you know, I really can't compete with that puppy. And finally, Ron Ali made a comment about the dog must be praising and praying at the same time. Well, as I looked into the audience, I saw Miss Anton, wave Miss Anton, wave at us. Miss Anton got up out of her front row seat and she slowly walked over and picked up that puppy who immediately quit yapping. She carried him back to her seat in front of everybody while the service was still going on. And the puppy never made another sound. <laughs> and I told the crowd, I said, you know, I hope that we don't miss this opportunity to recognize that puppy barking is like so many of our citizens that are reaching out for something. Mm -hmm. And that's the love that Miss Anton showed and had the courage to stand up among everybody and go grab that dog and put it in your lap. And so we ended on a very fine note. So thank you, Miss Anton. No, no. Yes, ma'am. I agree with you. And he had a little vest on also. So if anybody's missing our little black Labrador puppy, you know us at the pound now. But thank you, Ms. Anton. <laughs> thank you very much for what you did. Uh, those who are interested, in which I hope most of our citizens are, you can now find your garbage trash and recycling information on a completely hands-free app, the City of Mobile's free app, Recycle Coach. Recycle Coach is now available on Google Home and Amazon Alexa. Uh, this app provides recycling and waste information, including your custom garbage and tra trash collection schedule. Now, all the information you need to recycle or dispose waste is at your fingertips and at the tip of your tongue. Um, please share the news about this recycling app to those that may be interested. Uh, this morning, I had an opportunity to uh, be interviewed by Bill Riles who was asking about cold weather preparations. I think everyone needs to be keenly aware that with this weather being uh, temperature dropping like it's going to the next uh, 48 hours, uh, we need to be very, very careful. It's dangerous weather. Typically we end up having incidents created by space heaters uh, or we have vagrants that go into abandoned homes to try to stay warm and light a fire and that turns uh, into a, a bad situation. For those that may be homeless and need a place to stay warm, you can go to the Salvation Army, which is on uh, 1009 Dolphin Street. They have cold weather uh, facilities to get uh, those that need to get out of the weather, have a place for them to stay. So please watch out for our fellow citizens, and if someone is in need, please give them a helping hand. So thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Vice President, I mean. Mr. Small, Councilman Small. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. To Vice President Manzi, to the council, my fellow colleagues on the council, to the mayor and his administration. But it's another good day to be in Mobile, Alabama. Uh, yesterday we celebrated uh, the life and birthday of Dr. Martin Luther King, which was a great alpha man, just like our uh, Vice President Manzi. Mm -hmm. But I believe that Dr. King made a mistake by pledging alpha because no no he mistake. believed in the uh, philosophy of Kappa Alpha Psi, and that is achievement. But this week we are celebrating uh, Founders Week, and we, uh, we was founded in January 5th of 1911 which we had celebrated 107 years this year. But this week we're having a, a big week as we celebrate our Founders Week. 
I represent my fraternity with a proclamation and we will have our hallmark to come up and greet the council and the city body. Proclamation, whereas Kappa Alpha Nu fraternity was established on January the 5th, 1911 at Indiana University in Bloomington, Indiana, with the goals of uniting college men of cultural patriotism and honor in a bond of fraternity and Whereas it is the second oldest existing collegiate historical black Greek letter fraternity, which became the first incorporated black fraternity in the United States on May the 15th, 1911, and officially changed its name to Kappa Alpha Psi in December of 1914. And whereas after eight men of achievement in Mobile, Alabama, pensioned the grand chapter it dec decreed the establishment of the Mobile Alumni Chapter, Cal Alpha Psi Incorporated, on December 26, 1949. And the following year, their seal was received and the first officers were elected. And whereas this chapter is one of over 700 undergraduate and alumni chapters in nearly every state of the United States and international chapters in Nigeria, South Africa, the West Indies, the United Kingdom, Germany, Korea, and Japan, with over 125,000 <clears throat> active members whose activities impact local and global communities with charitable, educational, and mentoring efforts, and whereas a few notable members who implement the very essence of achievement in every field of human endeavors include Ralph Abernathy, Daniel Champion James, Wilf Chamberlain, Arthur Ashe, Gail Sayers, Johnny Cochran, Ed Garden, and Mike Tumley. And whereas Mobile is the home of the 23rd Grand Hallmark, Dr. Oliver S. Gubbs, President Sanford D. Bishop of Alabama State University Branch, renamed the S.D. Bishop State Community College, and the National Journal Editor, Dr. Kathleen S. Reed. Now, and therefore, I, C.J. Small, Council Member of District 3, along with the Mayor and the members of the Mobile City Council, do hereby proclaim Tuesday, January the 16th, 2018, as Kappa Alpha Psi Crimson and Cream Day in Mobile, and urge all the citizens to join with us in giving back to the Mobile community in meaningful ways done at the City of Mobile, Alabama, this 16th day of January 2018, C.J. Small, Council Member, District 3. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you very much, Brother Small. <coughs> On behalf of the Mobile Alumni Chapter of Kappa Alpha Psi, we'd like to thank the Council and the Mayor for this proclamation. Uh, at this time, I'm going to ask Maynard Odom, who is the Chairman of our Founders Day activities this weekend, to come and give you some brief remarks. Brother Odom. Thank you, Brother Rain and Brother Small, Council Members, Mayor. This week we have a, um, a week of uh, exciting activities culminating with our banquet on Saturday, where we will honor the president. We'll be honored with the president of our Grand Pole, Mark, Dr. Uh, Mr. Thomas Battles. We'll also be honoring our Man of the Year, Mr. Donald Dees, our Silhouette of the Year, Ms. Sonia Rogers, and our Citizen of the Year, Representative Jane Buskey. We will culminate those activities on Sunday morning uh, because Cap Alvisai is a was a founder on a religious basis. We will accommodate that with a church service at Lily Baptist Church. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, he told me to introduce others. Uh, we have uh, Brother Donald Bale and Brother Maynard Portis and Brother Sidney Rain, of course. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. 
adoption of the agenda. So moved. Second. Second. Final motion and second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Agenda's adopted. Appeals, we have request for a waiver of the noise ordinance on February 3rd, Cooper Riverside Park, February 11th on St. Anthony Street, February 13th on St. Anthony Street, January 20th, Chateau Square, Dolphin Street, and Claiborne Street. So moved. Second. Probably motion and second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Appeals. Uh, appeal of the Tree Commission's decision to deny a permit to remove certain trees in the Bitten Spur Road right of, right of way. Uh, at this time, we're going to hear from uh, Mayor Stimson and or his appointee. Uh, they would have five minutes, and subsequently, uh, anyone who would, uh, from the Tree Commission, I believe uh, Mr. Jesse McDaniel and others are here, you will have uh, an appropriate amount of time as well. And then after such, we'll have a two minute uh, period for rebuttal. And so we're going to ask the administration to go forward. The administration will, will proceed first, and then we'll hear from uh, the Tree Commission. Mr. Ricardo Woods, our city attorney, will come on behalf of the administration. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I'd be more than happy to answer any of your questions once I'm done with this first resuscitation. We're here on this appeal of the Tree Commission's denial of the certification sent by the mayor on November 29th, 2017. And I'll read two excerpts from the actual certification itself. It's addressed to the Mobile Tree Commission. It says, pursuant to Act 929H, 1365, 1961 regular session is amended 2015, I certify that the need to remove trees, that is, or may become reasonably necessary to do so to prevent public hazard or provide efficient economical services to the public. Third paragraph, the purpose of this certification is to protect the efficient and economical operation of critical infrastructure. To remove these trees is necessary to prevent a public hazard and to provide efficient and economical service to the public. Signed, William S. Stimson. That certification was properly given pursuant to the law on November 29, 2017, as I said. And what was also attached to that certification was an exhibit, uh, documentation from Ms. Linda St. John in the village of Spring Hill, which I think will also be addressing this issue. The November 29 certification was done properly, explicitly set out why the trees were to be removed. And just to give some clarity, I'll, I'll read the pertinent part of section 929 in the act itself, which is the tree commission law created by our legislator. In pertinent part, 929 states, in the event the mayor of the class two municipality or public utility shall certify that the commissioners that it desires to trim, cut, or remove trees that it is or may become reasonably necessary to do so to prevent the public hazard or to provide efficient or economic service to the public, then such certificate shall become, be conclusive evidence of approval of the application and the commission shall approve the same. And there shall be no appeal from such approval except as provided for our subsection 10. Now subsection 10 is why we're here before you all today. The certification was properly given. It tracks the language of the statute itself. The tree commission, by law, is required to give the permit to remove these trees from the public right of way of public property once the mayor properly certifies doing so. We're here today in large part because somebody didn't, either did not understand or did not see the need to obey the law as it is written. And what we're asking the city council as the governing body who appoints the tree commission at your pleasure is to affirm the appeal, accept the appeal, and ask that the Tree Commission follow the law as it is written and observe the law as it stands today. If I have any questions, I'll be more than happy to answer those questions. Any, any questions of Mr. Woods? Thank you. Is there anyone else here uh, this, this morning that would like to speak on behalf of uh, the administration in relative to the removal of these trees? Yes, sir. 
not sure of the procedure that we're under here. But, uh, my name is uh, Brian Taines, uh, and uh, I'm a um, officer and a board member of the Village of Spring Hill. I reside at 150 Battery Lane. And how much time am I going to have? I'm also an attorney, uh, but I'm not here as a paid attorney. I'm here as a volunteer. Um, my officer capacity is that of secretary of the Village of Spring Hill. And all of us who serve as officers and directors of the Village of Spring Hill are, uh, are unpaid volunteers. Um, this whole appeal really relates to a sidewalk project. That's what it stems from. And in order to complete the project, certain trees have to be removed. And it's a large project. It involves substantial infrastructure. And I'm not sure it's a miscommunication or what, but I would first let me echo what uh, Mr. Wood said. We, I, we agree with what the law says. Once the mayor certifies it, that's it. Um, um, because of that, and because this is a city project, we didn't, we did not attend the tree commission hearing, and it was not, there was no intent to slight the tree commission. We believe in what it does, but we thought that because of what the law says, this had been handled, and the mayor would not have issued that certification if, if the project had not been vetted already. So, with that in mind, we did not show up at the hearing. And so uh, the tree commission obviously didn't follow what the mayor asked, so here we are today. So uh, agreeing with Mr. Woods as to the law, I, will, I want to let you know a little bit about the project and what we've been doing um, in, in Spring Hill. Uh, this project is on Benton Spur Road. Uh, this is a project that our donors, our benefactors, and, and once again, we don't have a tax base, we don't have any funding source. This is something that the people out there want. Uh, they want it for three primary reasons. They want walkability. They want to be able to exercise and get out there on the sidewalks, but also for connectivity, because we want to connect churches to schools to commercial establishments. And if you go out and see what we've done over the last few years, we put in a lot of sidewalk infrastructure. And you may ask, how are we doing this? Well, we do it in partnership with the city. Uh, and we do that by applying for TAP grants. And with respect to those grants, somebody has to raise matching funds, which is typically 20%. Uh, for this project and for other projects, that typically runs about $60,000. We go out to individuals and to uh, private foundations and charities, and we search this money out, and, and, and we obtain the matching funds, we obtain the grants, and then we work with the city to implement the project. It's a city project. So I think that's important because that goes to the mayor's certification that he provided. Uh, some information that may not have been provided uh, or that the Tree Commission may not have been aware of is that we do have a grant in place to plant replacement trees. Uh, we have a grant for $5,000. I can't tell you today how many trees that's going to be, but I can tell you that we're going to follow the right tree and right place methodology that is supported by the city's urban forestry department and is also consistent with the Village of Spring Hills master plan. So, uh, and, and I think it's important to note that, you know, we are very cognizant of trees and landscaping and not only do we want walkability connectivity and 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 safety um excuse me but but what do i have one minute left um but we also want to and now i'm thrown off track but and that leads me back to the biggest point really it's safety okay and and we have a we have a group here from the village of spring hill and i'd ask y'all to stand please if you support this uh application and one of our members, I don't know if she'll get to speak because I'm speaking now, but she lives in the Gates community, which is right along uh, this stretch where these trees are going to be removed. And she supports this, and their community supports this. So I know I'm running out of time, uh, but I'm 
happy to answer any questions that you have uh, with respect to the type of trees that are going to be removed and, and any questions about that. Uh, I will say that with all of these projects, we survey and engineer, engineer them in advance, and we try and go through that process to preserve the tree canopy that is there and to, and to remove and to work the project with as little tree removal as possible in each instance. Uh, Mr. Vice Chairman? Yes, ma'am. Uh, Brian, thank you for coming, and it's good to see all of our friends from the Village of Spring Hill. You all do a terrific job. Appreciate all your efforts. Uh, Brian did mention that this is a city project. The city also applied for the grant. The Village of Spring Hill or any other volunteer group do not apply for the grants. The city applies for the grant. The Village of Spring Hill offered, as they always do, to come up with the match. They also volunteered to find a grant to replant trees, which they didn't have to do. So going above and beyond the call, so I just want to make sure that we all understand it is a city project. The city applied for the grant and received it. And this is a very large project on Bitten Spur. It's not even my district. But I certainly support this because this is what residents want. And the people who live in the Gates community can certainly assert that, that that's what they want. Um, we are constantly being asked by people to construct sidewalks. So getting the grant, the city's not having to pay for this. Um, makes it the best of both worlds. So I appreciate you coming. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Chairman. Gina and Are you, Mr. Weeks? Was there an answer? Did you need a? Answer? Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, I, did. I wasn't even asking you a question, right? Okay, uh, Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. Um, first of all, I'd like to um, just make sure everybody's aware that there's been some sidewalks going into Spring Hill with um, great respect for the trees that uh, provide the uh, landscape and canopy that uh, Ms. Tim's talked about. Tanks talked about the um, it, it, you only have to drive a short way to sh see the curves in the sidewalk that were uh, just expertly crafted by uh, Miss St. John herself uh, on the uh, construction site and, and so with that said is there any protected trees that are, that are being taken out and if so how many and otherwise what's what's the makeup of the of the uh, harvest if you yes will. thank you uh, councilman there are 28 trees that will be affected. Uh, that's my understanding. And uh, when you look at where these trees are going to be removed, there are really two areas. One is a stretch along the Gates subdivision on the northwest side of Old Shell Road. And if you've ever walked along there, you've actually walked in Old Shell Road because you're otherwise dodging trees and roots and it's impossible to get down that way. It's, a, it's not a wide path. You have, the, you have Bittenspar yes. Road and then you have a large wall that is the border for the subdivision and within that stretch there are 24 of these trees uh, with respect to those varieties there are 14 water oaks um, they do not appear to be planned in terms of their planning they appear to be volunteers <laughs> and that just grew up and we all know the dangers associated with water oaks there are six bradford pears uh, in that area these Bradford pears were planted by um, a well-intended group a long time ago, but they've outlived their life expectancy, or they are close to doing that. They're dying, and, and parts of the trees are falling down. Uh, beyond that, there's one dead tree that will need to be removed regardless. There's a pecan tree, a red oak, and there is one live oak, and that's a long way to get to your question, but uh, that is a tree that we certainly respect in the village of Spring Hill. We've planted over 200 of them over the last 11 years in the village. So uh, that tree is crowded and pinched in between Bitten Spur and the wall. Um, it's really restricted. So if there ever was a candidate for uh, removal of one of our beloved live oak trees, that would be one of them. And then beyond this stretch along the Gates community, there are four other trees that will be removed or would be removed. One is a cherry laurel, one is a water oak, uh, one is a pine tree and another is a live oak. And I'm told that this live oak does have disease, that it is dying, that it falls under the canopy of another beautiful live oak. So this is also a tree that falls into that category where removal makes sense, particularly in light of the size of this project. And just to, to echo once again, you know, that's why we thought the certification was appropriate in this instance, because of the, the size and nature of the project. And, 
you know, we're we're not a private developer. We're not. I understand. We're trying to Thank improve. Thank you. That answers my Correct. question. Thank you very much. Any, any further questions? And, and if not, uh, thank you for your commentary. Thank you. Uh, we, we're going to now hear from uh, members of the Mobile Tree Commission uh, relative to this appeal. Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. Before you do that, did you offer uh, for three people to speak to in favor and one and, and three against? What was the uh, well, original? Oh, there may have another speaker on the other side. That, that would be fine. Are there Are other speakers four and four? Uh, who would like to offer commentary in support of the uh, removal of the trees? So we'll accept two more speakers. You'll have the, the, the three minutes, you know, the five minutes supported. Well, well Mr. Mr. Chairman, you're giving everybody five minutes? Well, you don't have to take advantage of the whole thing. <laughs> I mean, I think we need to reduce that to three we, minutes. I, think, I, think I won't. Get the, the Give it one side five minutes, not everybody yeah, five this, minutes. This we'll be here to tomorrow. from a personal yes, standpoint. My name is Rita Langus, and I live at 4272 Bittenspur Road in the Gates. My house backs up to the brick wall, and uh, if you are familiar with those lots, they're not particularly large lots. However, behind my, just behind my house alone, there are five trees, which means, which to me is they're very close, way too close together. Um, there are two, three water oaks and there are two Bradford pears. Um, out of those five trees, they're gonna take three, or they have proposed to take three trees down. One is a water oak and two are Bradford pears. All three of these trees are overgrown. They're at the end of their life and are, uh, the Bradford pears especially are gonna break and, and do damage to the walls. So I'm here to represent the Gates who are looking forward to the sidewalks and hopefully to the new trees that will be planted. Thank you. Thank you. And I have, I have a question, ma'am. We have a question for you. Oh, I'm sorry. Mr. Richardson. Yes. Okay, you said that you had water oaks and bed for pears. Yes. Are there other water oaks in the area? Oh, uh, yes. You're talking about in the area up and down Bittenspur Road? Yes, ma'am. Yes, there are other water oaks. So, if we took the water oaks out, we wouldn't be endangering that species. There are plenty of other water oaks in the area. Yes, there are. In fact, the two trees they're leaving behind my house are water oaks. Okay, so there are other water oaks. Yeah. Okay, so do you believe that the only reason those are Bradford pears trees are out there that someone went out there and the set them down. You think they came up on their own? No, they were planted by our neighborhood. They were planted. Do you believe the neighborhood can plant some more? Yes. I was just trying to see if yes. uh, these trees, um, can these trees be replaced and whether or not there are other trees out there that can represent the one they are trying to take. We don't want any endangered tree to be removed if, if at all possible. But if you're telling me that there are plenty of other water oaks out there, you can look out the door and see other water oaks, that it's possible to plant more Bradford pads in a couple of years, you'll have new pads on those trees, then I have to give some thought to that. I thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. Again, we ask that all electronic devices be silenced or turned off. Thank you. Is, is there anyone else who'd like to speak in support of the removal of the trees? Uh, any other commentary from the council? Mm -hmm. what we'll now hear from uh, the uh, members of the Mobile Tree Commission. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, Good morning. My name is William Rux. I live at 1820 Canebrake Court North. Uh, I am the District 6 representative and just want to appreciate the mayor and the city council for allowing us to speak today. Um, really, uh, just want to start off by giving you an explanation of why we did not permit. Uh, I really do think this goes to a lot of the level of communication and uh, we'll walk through that side. 
I really do think in this case, part of it's an understanding, uh, misunderstanding of the law, part of it's for us to seek clarification on the law. Um, when this process first came up, the first one that came through, the mayor actually uh, represented himself at the meeting. It came through as an application for a permit, uh, and we walked through that whole process. It was in uh, District 6, and so we walked through that process. We became familiar with it. Um, the second time, this is the third time that the certification has been used. The second time, the mayor invited us out to a walkthrough. Uh, it was a very good walk through the city, a big picture of how we could balance. Uh, that was a discussion of the History Museum downtown, uh, which he provided us that feedback. And once that came, same thing. Um, but what's happened is, is the first one came through as an application permit. permit. The second one came through as a certification letter. This one came through as new business, as just a letter that was there. Uh, during the meeting, uh, unfortunately, this is where the communication breakdown uh, occurred. We had no representative from the city. Uh, we usually do have the city planning who walks through it. We had no representation from Spring Hill. Uh, we had no legal representation. And so we did not know what the process was to go do. Um, so ultimately, our vote of denial, and I want to back up for one second. I will say that the uh, Spring Hill, um, and I've talked to several commissioners, on merit, uh, this is a very strong application. Had it gone through us in a normal process, I believe very strongly we would be supportive of it. Uh, they have come to us multiple times before. We have donated trees. Uh, they are one of the best areas of Mobile and moving forward with the trees and supporting that. We want to continue to support them. Um, but ultimately, we had no voice there. We had no representation. We are private citizens and asked to, by the law, to pass something where we had no explanation, no rationale, nobody to talk to. We sincerely thought it was symbolic. We th we thought the permit would go through automatically. So we did it to be able to get our voice heard and uh, apparently it worked because we're standing here and, and talking about it. But um, the other follow-up I really want to have is that just to go through the tree commission, uh, I went through the last three years. I've been on the committee for about three years. And over the last three years, the city has come to us in some form of probably nine um, applications. We have approved all nine of those. Um, two of those are sidewalks around schools. Ultimately, our only question at the end is, what can we do to plant trees to help shade the kids walking to school? We've had just uh, previously the Tiger Grant for the Broad Street. They came in front of us a month or two ago, and we know that's going to be a tough one going forward. The rest of Broad Street are going to be a lot of historic trees. But the communication was there. You know, we were able to ask the questions. We were able to support. So I do believe, as a commission, we are relatively balanced in looking at the infrastructure, the overall view of the city. Um, the last thing I want to talk about is the law itself. What a uh, What's kind of frustrating about this law is the way it's worded, and I'm no lawyer, so I'm not going to get into that uh, aspect of it. Um, the way it says it shall be permitted, what, what we really struggle with is, again, we are a board of private citizens. Uh, we do this as a volunteer. We're passionate. We want to be part of the city. But to have an instance, I can't think of any other law that actively asks us to commission um, to approve something. Um, that means we have to go on record, somebody has to nominate it, somebody has to second it, and we have to go on record supporting it, whether we do or not. So long term, um, it, it just feels like a law. I think there's good intentions behind it. I definitely think there are reasons where it would be valuable, um, but it doesn't streamline the process. It still keeps us involved in it. So I think that's where we just want to look at is long term. Is there something we could do to balance this, whether that certification goes through and, and we don't have to take that active? Uh, and overall, what I would like to recommend, although I don't know if it'll go through, is I'd like to see that come back as an official application. Let us have the discussion here today. Let the Tree Commission actively approve that. If that's not a case, uh, again, overall, I just want us to look at what's the right use of that law going forward. Uh, but again, I do appreciate the Spring Hill. Um, they have provided a lot to the city, and I appreciate the time to speak to you on this. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much Mr. for coming. Mr. Rex. Mr. Rex. Rex. You know, oftentimes uh, we, uh, you know, we support you all in protecting trees. I want to talk about planting trees. Yes, sir. I have three parks that basically I don't have any trees. The Trinity Gardens Park, I don't have any shade structures that people have to stand up in the hot sun. So we have other people saying, uh, don't cut down trees. I'm saying we need trees. Is it possible that we can get trees from the Tree Commission to plant at the Trinity Gardens Park 
at the Tunnelville Park, at the, the Figures Park, and at the Crane Park. Absolutely. Um, one of the reasons, uh, when it comes to a tree commission and uh, there's removal of trees, one of the things that generally happens is there's a one-for-one -one payment to a tree bank of a tree that's removed. There's also usually a two-for-one for, for LIBO. Uh, we have funding for the tree commission that is available. And ironically, the one group who has used that effectively is Spring Hill. We planted, uh, was it 12 live oaks, I believe? At the roundabout, if you go through the roundabout on Spring Hill, we donated the money for that. Um, All we ask is you provide for new business, provide a letter stating the trees, a, a rough layout of where it's at, and um, we'll be happy. That's, that's ultimately what we're looking at doing is what can we do to promote the health of trees that are already planted? Uh, what can we do to make sure that it's balanced with the sidewalk, the infrastructure, and then really to promote the growth of new trees, and it ties back to the right tree, right place. Let's get the right tree in there so we're not having a conversation <coughs> 20, 30 years ago. So we need to send a letter or request. Yep. All you have to do is send a letter requesting uh, exactly to the tree commission. Next time we have a meeting, uh, it'll go on the agenda, and then we can, uh, uh, if you have a representative at the meeting, we can discuss then. Um, uh, supported that with a uh, money from the tree bank. Okay, thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thank you. If, if I could comment, Chair. Um, thank you, William. I really appreciate your service on behalf of the residents in District 6. As I know that you are um, very serious about your job and it's voluntary, um, as a lot of our community assets are voluntary. Um, I can speak to the question that Mr. Um, Councilman Richardson had, and I worked with the Tree Commission at Medal of Honor Park and presented a tree landscaping plan and asked for any kind of um, support, and you were all very, very supportive in getting trees because we lost so many when we built the structure. but. Um, I think your points about the law itself having um, maybe needing to be clear as what is your obligation or how you can go about um, handling this, but communication is key. And it seems that when the communication, and that might have been just the perfect storm to not have someone to turn to that you were used to for the other certifications or working with the, the administration, the mayor's office, or the city staff. So um, I thank you for coming down and enlightening this council. Um, and again, I too think that you probably would have come to closure in working with the mayor's office or Spring Hill because you've shown that willingness over and over again. Um, so again, I thank you for your time. Thank you, thank you so much. Mr. Vice President, if I might as well, um, I want to thank you for coming as well. I know you were a volunteer and taking your time out to come down to these meetings is um, difficult uh, for most people. Thank you also for what the Tree Commission does to support groups like the Village of Spring Hill and so many other community groups that we have in the city who try to come back and do the right things, replant trees, and work through the, planet, the Tree Commission before taking down any trees. And I know the Village of Spring Hill does that, and you all have worked very well with them. And Terry Poche is my commissioner, and I am very grateful for the work that he does. I do want to point out uh, that Bert Hoffman was at the meeting. He was the representative for the administration, and he did inform the commission about the, the need to approve what the mayor was putting forth. I'm not sure how all that came about or didn't come about, but I just did want to point that out, that um, he was there. I know that the folks of the Village of Spring Hill wish they could have had somebody at the meeting. Um, but again, they felt like it was a city project. It had all been worked out and worked through, so they didn't feel like they had to be there. But certainly from now on, I think we will make sure to go back and see that um, someone is there in case there are any questions, you know, going forward. I think the perfect storm was the next analogy. Yeah, I think yeah. what Mrs. Rich said, the perfect storm uh, was, was appropriate, yeah. But, but again, I think your point about the law saying that you shall do it, which means must in legal terms, like in other words, no wiggle room, is um, if there is not a consensus that you can build knowing that um, the application that comes out of the mayor's office signed certifying, then perhaps that needs to be written into the law so it's clear that you can debate it, but if you don't certify it, you indeed know. But you didn't know where that would take you until this point. Well, just as an example, I know the urban uh, planning department has an ability right now, if they find a tree to be of an immediate hazard, 
they can remove that tree uh, and it does it goes on to the um, it goes on to the agenda but it is not something to be voted on also there are certain trees that are considered to be invasive species that we have decided as a commission to streamline the process they don't have to come in front of us they just simply document that that's part where the confusion came from this was falling into that same category of something that felt automatic and uh, so we feel our voice was back on it but following something like what the urban uh, planning department has now would be something to look at uh, as a potential roadmap okay. thank you i do think jesse uh, we have one more representative yes, from sir. the tree commission so. thank you again good morning good morning, good morning. My name is Jesse McDaniel. I live at 1153 Old Shell Road, and I volunteer my time to serve on the Mobile Tree Commission. We're here today, obviously, to discuss this appeal by the mayor involving uh, these trees in the village of Spring Hill. In the past, the Tree Commission has partnered with Spring Hill to make the neighborhood more walkable and inviting. Specifically, in 2016, the Tree Commission provided a grant to the community for the purchase of 12 live oaks to be planted on the roundabout, as uh, Mr. Rooks mentioned. We continue to support Spring Hill's efforts to make the area more beautiful, and, and we thank you for being here today. At the Tree Commission's last meeting, we were again presented with a request from Spring Hill. This time, the neighborhood was requesting permission to remove several trees from the city right away so the community could build this sidewalk project you've heard. This kind of request is considered routine for the Tree Commission. We have consistently supported the removal of trees for projects such as this, and again, we have a, a history with this neighborhood in particular. And listening to the speakers earlier, it appears that there's a perception that somehow the Tree Commission was against this project, but that is missing the point to a large degree. For some strange reason, this request included a, a letter from the mayor certifying these trees had to be removed, that it was necessary. State law allows the mayor to take such an action to prevent a public hazard or to provide efficient service to the public when it may not otherwise be secured. In such cases, the Tree Commission is bound to support that certification. However, it is my belief that the law does not intend for the mayor to abuse his public safety authority and exercise it for something that would be routine business somehow a request uh, and it and I want to ba go back to uh, what mr. Wood said the letter from uh, st. John if you will go and read that letter it was addressed to the Tree Commission and it was asking the Tree Commission for our approval for this these trees to be removed that's something you haven't heard here Somehow, that request directed to us was intercepted by the mayor who preemptively certified these trees needed to be cut for public safety reasons when that was not the reality. There was no emergency here. There was no reason to believe that we would not have approved the request had we been allowed to properly consider it. I think that's what Mr. Rooks was trying to impress upon you. Unfortunately, this is not the first time the Tree Commission has been cast aside in such an arbitrary manner. In 2015, the mayor intervened on behalf of a citizen who wanted three healthy live oaks removed from the right-of-way in front of their home. That citizen's request had previously been denied by the Tree Commission because there was no legitimate reason for the trees to be destroyed. There was no public benefit. The trees were perfectly healthy. Oddly, the mayor was willing to step in and certify those trees needed to be cut for public safety reasons also. That action, just like the one being appealed today, effectively overrides the Tree Commission's decision and required the taxpayers to foot the bill for the removal. That history affected our decision here in this case. The mayor may not have violated the letter of the law, but he certainly violated the spirit of it. Ladies and gentlemen, we find that unacceptable. The unanimous decision by the Tree Commission to disapprove of the mayor's certification was intentional. Make no mistake, this had nothing to do with Spring Hill. It had everything to do with how the request was presented. 
If we agreed with the mayor's certification, it would have been an admission on the part of the tree commission that we are no longer capable of speaking for public trees in this city. To allow the mayor to conduct the routine business for the tree commission would, neg would negate the need for our organization in the first place and render it useless. We would like for the mayor to allow the appropriate deliberation to take place and stop taking unilateral action when there's no good reason for it. Let the tree commission do its job. We expect citizens to follow the rules when it comes to trees, don't we? Certainly the mayor should respect the same process. Isn't there enough strife in city government already? Why do we need to add to it by creating this conflict when it need not be? Let us resolve to honor both the spirit and the letter of the law and perform the task given to us by the people of our great city. I respectfully submit to your decision and I thank you for your time. Yes, sir. Thank you. Anyone else that would like to have an opportunity to, to speak uh, from the Tree Commission's perspective? I have Rita Langus. Ms. Langus? Oh, that's she, she spoke. Oh, Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, oh, she was the gates. Wonderful. Okay. The gates. So, yeah. are there any rebuttals, Mr. Wood? Yes, Mr. Chairman. Thank you so very much. Um, I want to point out three things that are uh, blatant inaccuracies. First, we are following the rules. The certification is what was required by law. There is no negotiation that has to go back and forth between the citizens who want to do this and the Tree Commission. Though the Tree Commission may not agree with the law, the law is the law. It certification requires, it says shall, they must follow the law. To not like the law and to not obey the law are totally two different things. Secondly, the law does not require that there be an emergency. I read it to you, it's been put in the record. The letter from Miss St. John is attached, it is in the record, it is to the Tree Commission. There's no disputing that. The fact that this is a public-private partnership is clear. The law is built to take more jumping through hoops, more bureaucracy out of things. For the longest time, from what I've seen, what happens here, and what you saw here clear today, and I'm glad Mr. McDaniel said as much, the Tree Commission would hold citizens and the administration hostage with negotiating whether or not money goes into the tree bank, hence the voluntary $5,000. According to this law, the mayor's not required to do that. He simply, by law, by matter of right, gives a certification. If they do not agree with the certification, they have the right to deny it. The process for coming before you all to appeal it is what we're doing today. Even if you all don't certify it, which the law says they shall, they have no legitimate reason for disagreeing with it, we're just asking you all to affirm and follow the law. There's a legal process for all of this. The fact that, that, that there's some miscommunication, some mistake, there's a certification, the law says what it says. Mr. Toler was there, as Ms. Gregory mentioned, there was another administration person there. The letters are there, the letters are in the record. Everybody knows what the law says because we can read it. I read it into the record. It's clear, let there be no misunderstanding. For the non-lawyers who don't understand, when there is a certification, the Tree Commission shall, must, must, Give the permit, and we have to move forward. That is the law, and that is how it stands. I ask you to affirm. Can I ask a question of Mr. Woods? Weiss? Yes, ma'am. Well, I'm thinking about it. Um, does the Tree Commission publish an agenda that they get ahead of time? Yes. That's a, just, that's a question for the Tree Commission okay. that you would have to ask. Right. I do, yeah. Yeah. Yes, we get it from Rick Olson all the time. Yeah. Was, was the um, certification on your agenda? Did you know that ahead of time? The certification was on the agenda under new business. It is not filed under the permit aspect. I of it. see. Okay. But it, yes, it was on the agenda. Okay. Um, do you think the disposition of your group would have been any different if it had been filed under a, as an application and therefore the certification? The. Um, I generally don't know if I can answer that because we still would have had some of the same questions we have now. 
Um, ultimately, again, what it came down to is um, we had nobody to address the questions with. We had nobody to go through with the Spring Hill, the city, to really identify if we felt that due diligence has been done on the permit. We would have been in the same situation where the law would have required us. Uh, as it said, um, if that had been under the permit, I think it would have been more clear that the law would require us to do it. Then I'll ask this because I'm not real familiar with the law that was passed out of the state house. Sure. And I'm not saying that it's a bad thing, but um, if there, if it's a shall, um, is there any need to bring that information to the tree commission? If yes, yes, because that's what the law requires. But it in retrospect, if it's something that they don't have all the information or they don't have people present to ask their questions. Once again, that's a hypothetical that didn't happen here. There were two members of the administration there to answer questions. Secondly, the law still requires them upon certification. All of the things they're asking for to hold people hostage are not required under the certification. So here's the process so that everybody's clear about it. When the mayor gives a certification, they shall approve it. Let me finish. They shall approve it. If they do not approve it, we will appeal it to the city council. If the city council does not approve it, we will take it to circuit court and get a mandamus and force the tree commission to follow the law. Can I just say one thing? Yeah. Uh, yes, actually, because I bought. I asked him to come forward. I, I, so I'd like to hear the thought process. All I want to say, and I'm just going to hear, is just we're a puppy looking for love. That that's what it comes down to. Is and ultimately, all we want is we know what the law says, but. We're the own citizens of Mobile. We volunteer our time. We do this because we have a love for it. We want to make the city better. Um, so I understand what the law says. I just ask at the end, you realize what you're asking your own citizens of Mobile to do is and to voluntarily put your name on record to say you support something, whether you have the information or not. If that's a law, we'll do it as long as we're in the position of this tree commission. But I ask you to understand what position you put us in and think about that going forward. Mr. I'm not going to argue the law. Mr. Chairman, let me clarify something. I would ask that the council members take a look at the record. The certification mayor is there. What is attached to Ms. St. John's letter to the tree commission is a very good explanation of the project along with a number of the plans. And so to say that there's no information, I understand that there may be questions, to say that there's no information is not what's in the record. So I just want to point that out. And we're, we're, we're glad to have the volunteers, but we also ask that when we follow the process, that they do so as well. And that full record was provided to the Tree Commission. What is attached to my letter, um, the, the mayor's letter? Right. Miss St. John's letter? Yes, Mr. McDaniel mentioned it was addressed to the community. Right, and, and, the, and the locations of all of the trees, right? That, that full, whatever it is, 20-something page record. He is correct. Yes. That the full documentation was there. The only yes. difference this time, again, goes to communication. Of Usually we have um, the city planning to go through each tree, why it has to be taken down, why the sidewalk can't be moved. That information is that additional level of communication that has worked in the past for the past three years. So again, we're not going to stand up here and argue. I'm not going to argue with a lawyer about the law. I'm definitely, that's not my side of it. Mr. Just providing you the feedback. And um, thank you. No, Mr. Uh, Mr. Uh, Chairman. If, if I could comment. Yeah. Well, Joel is asking me and my counsel this morning. Joel Davis and counsel this morning. I don't have any more questions for this gentleman. Thank you. I do. Oh, thank you. Well, then let's, let's see you in first. That's fine. I uh, appreciate you all coming down so much. Um, several questions. My first question is, were y'all aware that any city administration or straight of was present at this particular meeting? Um, not to that level. We do have members of the urban planning. We do have people from the Department of Forestry there. Usually the difference is usually we have had legal representation. Uh, usually you have somebody there to speak for the application from the city planning department. Usually you have somebody, whether it's a private citizen or somebody from Spring Hill, to address the questions. All the documentation was the same. We'll agree with that. But usually you have um, um, somebody there to really give you the details of the why. We had the what, we didn't have the why. Yeah. So really, 
many of your meetings, you do have legal representation that you can ask the questions to, correct? Yes, and actually the first several times we've had this come up, we had legal representation, you know, legal representation, and we've asked the question of, is there any different forms in the wording? Can we state the wording sometime? And we still haven't really got a clear answer of if we have any uh, uh, additional um, steps to take. If we shall permit it, can we add additional wording that still voices we have concerns on it? And we haven't found that path ahead yet, no. Again, you know, from my office, I do appreciate, you know, you all guys for coming down here and even addressing the council. Uh, what we're getting down to is transparency and communication. And you are one of the few boards that actually brought this to council where there is lack of communication and transparency between you all and the city. And that's something that we will have to work on is really communication and transparency. Because again, it's a volunteer board, you all don't have to do it, but just being concerned citizens for the greatness of Mobile, we do appreciate you that. And I do agree with you. You know, you just like a puppy looking for love. You know, just as well, <laughs> you know, keep Mobile beautiful on the police citizen board. I mean, there's many other boards that's feeling the same way that you all do. But I'm just going to continue to tell you, or just tell you to continue to keep doing what you're doing and don't rub a stamp. And that's exactly what you're coming down here saying, that you don't rub a stamp, even though the law says shell. But the thing about it is that you don't want to be taken for granted. You know, and that's the thing about it. I don't want to be taken for granted, you know. But the thing about it is if we just all just get together and communicate and transparency, we won't be having a discussion right now. But again, I do appreciate you all for coming down here this morning and addressing the council on this issue. Mr. Chairman, I have a question. Mr. Yes. Yes, sir. I, I just want to get this straight in my mind. Are you really here to save the trees? Or are you here regarding the method by which uh, the trees are being taken out? Are you saying that the trees ought to stay? Is, this, is that why you are here? Well, we have, as a, um, as a tree commission, we have removed perfectly healthy trees. Um, I do believe that our goal in the tree commission is to provide a voice that leans in the direction of the trees, but also as citizens, it's our job to look at the balance. We, Mr. Rock, uh, you, got, you got to answer me yes or no. You just rang around the well, room. Well, actually, I, yes, sir. Are, are, you, uh, are you here today to say that these 27 trees should not be cut down. Is that why you're here today? I can't say that because we felt we okay. did not. I would say no. But you're, so, then, but, so you're here because of the, how it's being done. It seems like you're being here bypassing uh, the tree commission. So, so you're not, you know, that, that these people up here want the trees cut so they can have sidewalks. So you said you, you're not here, you're not bothered with that. It seems to me that, uh, you are here because of how we came to where we are today. It seems like to me somebody has ignored the tree commission and you all was left out. Yes. Okay, I just want to make Thank sure you. I had that right. Okay. We're good. Uh, Mr. Vice President, before yes, we move on, um, our attorney, Wanda Cochran, has also been involved in this, and I think we might just want to hear from her sort of as a, as a bottom line, perhaps. Um, I don't. I don't know if there is a bottom line, but uh, I, I agree with uh, I agree with Mr. Woods that the the law is very plain that when the mayor makes his certification, that the tree commission does not have the discretion to deny the application. That much is plain. But we're not talking about. I believe, um, from where I'm sitting, what we're talking about is number one. Does the mayor, when he is constructing a project, have to file an application with the commission? And the answer to that is yes. Number two, does the commission have the discretion to deny the application? Maybe not, mostly not, probably not, if the certification is done properly, which it was in this case. Number three, we are all talking as if there are only two people affected by this application. And the reason that you have boards, councils, and other uh, discretionary boards is because there are other voices. So for example, if the application had been presented by the mayor, the tree commission had approved it, 
ordinary citizens would have an opportunity to per to appeal that decision to this council which is how the law is set up um, the the lack of communication may be due in large part because the council has not adopted an ordinance either defining this specifically or prescribing uh, the procedures to be used on appeal and you may want to address that but I think for today the certification was made it was made properly and that um, the uh, there there's no wiggle room to to um, to get around that if that's an official legal term wiggle room do you agree with that Mr. Woods? That's a legal term. I do. No, no, sir. But I, I, is it time? It's time for a motion. It's time. Yeah, I move to sustain the appeal of the administration. Second. Yes, sir. Thank you. Um, first of all, I also would like to thank uh, all the citizens, both those on the tree commission and those representing the village of Spring Hill and the neighborhood, for being here today. Um, these discussions are important. Uh, to the life of the city. Uh, I think uh, the, any, any institution ends up at a better place uh, with, with discussions like this. Um, it, it, this sidewalk project, although one of many uh, that have been going on in the city of Mobile, uh, began some time ago. I had, uh, prior to this, heard from residents along the Bittenspur Corridor about the uh, unsafe conditions that existed for pedestrians and for children on bicycles uh, and their desire uh, in addition to have the sidewalks that they saw going up in other places particularly around the village of Spring Hill. Now the village of Spring Hill I think it's I think it's this is an important point that gets lost. The village of Spring Hill was the partner of the city of Mobile in this project but it is a city of Mobile project. Make no mistake, it is a city of Mobile project. It is, it is not a Village of Spring Hill project. The Village of Spring Hill is not contracting with the people who are gonna put the sidewalks in. It's a city of Mobile project. Uh, I became aware at an early date that there were gonna be some trees that had to come down, and um, I went out there and I eyeballed the trees myself, all 27 of them. Uh, I looked at the uh, two live oaks in particular. Uh, as, as I've said, there are a number of, as has been said, there are a number of water oaks. Uh, water oaks, as we all know, are, uh, are, are trees that don't have an infinite life like live oaks do. They hollow out from the inside and eventually they create problems. Bradford pears, which uh, were uh, ubiquitous across this country uh, for many years in the 80s, they were planted everywhere, I think, and I know that they're not planted anywhere now because they have a certain 20 or whatever it is, 20 or 30 year life, and then they become very unsafe. Their limbs go like this and they get old and the limbs fall off. This is an opportunity uh, for us to put the right tree in the right place and provide a, need, a needed anem, uh, amenity along, uh, old, along a Bitten Spur Road. And as has been said, the Village of Spring Hill has a grant of $5,000 with which, which to replace these trees with the right kinds of trees in the right places. I asked the mayor to exercise his authority to certify this important infrastructure project in, in uh, District 5 to the, to the Tree Commission. Now, why? And the allegation has been made that this is that this is uh, that this is routine business. I would counter and say that a one-mile infrastructure project, where we're going to put sidewalks all along this play and connect uh, churches and businesses, is not a routine project. Uh, I myself have gone to the, the to the tree commission when I had trees in front of my house. I needed to get removed. I think the Tree Commission plays an important part in safeguarding our trees in the city. But I would argue that large infrastructure projects should, uh, that, that, that these are uh, 
perfect projects for the mayor to exercise his ability to certify. And the legislature granting the, granted the mayor the ability to certify. When would he use that except in instances like this? And they're not limited to emergency situations. I mean, if, you read the, if you read the statute, it says, in the event the mayor shall certify to the commissioners that, that it desires to, that it, the city, desires to trim, cut, or remove trees, and that it is or may become reasonably necessary to do so to prevent a public hazard or to provide efficient or economical service to the public, then such certificate shall be conclusive evidence for the approval of the application. And if you go down to subsection B of this section, that's where they handle emergencies, completely separate. Um, there have, there have uh, uh, been some uh, statements with respect to not a much enough information provided misunderstanding. And, and I think this is uh, perhaps an instance where we all need to learn from it. But that does not change the fact that the only way we can install these sidewalks is to take down these trees. And that once the mayor certifies that they need to be removed, which he did appropriately in this instance, then the tree commission is required to issue the permit. Uh, I, I understand that members of the tree commission might not like the way it was handled, might not like voting to take the trees down, but there have been instances in the past, one fairly recently, where the circuit court required the city council to take action that the city council wasn't really excited about taking, but we followed the law, we did what the judge told us to do, and we issued the order. Um, and I, I would say that this is an instance where the tree commission is required to issue the permit. Uh, again, I want to thank everybody for being here. I, I, I hope and ask for my uh, colleagues to support this appeal. Thank you, sir. If, if I could comment. Ms. Rich. Thank you. Um, I think the one thing that's um, a little bit disturbing is to hear about a tree commission that holds a city hostage because I, I don't think that that's really a fair, I, I mean obviously it's an opinion um, that one could take or be frustrated by a decision that any board makes. Um, but I know that the law is clear too so I know what my position will be on behalf of the mayor's office and the law as it is written. Um, I, I think that what Councilman Dave said about a learning curve or learning lesson um, is important because in the past you worked with entities and when they rolled out the plans and the proper people were present and you've already reviewed the site. Um, that's why I wanted to make sure that you had it ahead of time in case you are the type that goes out ahead of time to look so you're knowledgeable at your meeting. But. Um, I was not aware of the law, even though it affects a board that the council um, appoints. And again, that's um, a communication issue. Uh, I learned about it, I believe, through, through my representative uh, about what the mayor's responsibility um, based on a law that came out of the state house. But it wasn't anything that this council discussed or, or could go to their commissioner to find out you know, how that law might be written so that it's the very big comfort zone um, because of that ability that the mayor has. And again, I understand exactly what um, um, Councilman Daves um, understood about getting the project, you know, moving along so in case it was, I guess, held hostage. But I've, I know that I can't ever say, um, in my experience in working with the Tree Commission, whether it's the current configuration or in the past. Um, but again, um, it's, it's a matter of making sure if there is a certification that the mayor's office is represented that your questions can be answered or you can go on record that it is something because i believe when we got the judge's order on a rezoning that this council over and over again asked to, to stay in the r1 but they went to court and got the lb2 um, was basically we had no choice and perhaps your minutes could reflect that even though um, someone doesn't want to raise their hand to if they disagree but it, it is something that has to be clearly understood by your commission and if the law could get better to give you a, a place at the table with it perhaps that's an opportunity I, I'm, I'm not sure about that but 
again, it's something where you're, you pretty much know, but I think you knew that then, and perhaps you didn't even think there was an appeal process. Mm -hmm. But every board has an appeal process through this council as, as when it's a board that the council um, configurated or the legislation configured, the local legislature configured it. So again, thank you for your time. Mr. Vice President. Yes, sir. Um, I think that all the uh, dialogue has been good and it's been provided to us because there is a law in place that allows for such an appeal. So the law is working. We have one question. We have actually one question with two parts that's before us. This isn't about whether or not the law is good or bad or whether or not the project is good or bad or whether or not Village of Spring Hill was involved or not involved or whether or not there were people at the meeting or not. None of that is relevant. What is relevant is our understanding of the law and these two parts of the question. One is, did the mayor act appropriately? And number two, did the board comply with the law? That's it. It's that simple. And uh, Mr. Chairman, I'm done. Thank you. Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir, Mr. Richardson. Call for the motion. Um, before we do that, I did want to make quick it's time to vote um, I, I agree it is time to vote we have certainly talked about this for a long time but I do want to thank our tree Commission representatives for coming again and I agree with everything that's been said it's a learning curve I think we have all learned from this and we will certainly do better in the in the future but um, as we mentioned the bottom line is it is the law and we are required to adhere to the law and I think we will do that this is a city project uh, it is not a Village of Spring Hill project, although they are providing the match, and they have also gotten a grant to replant trees. Right tree, right place. They're going to do that. This is what residents want. And the Village of Spring Hill, and I've certainly worked with them a lot with other sidewalk projects, we do everything we can to preserve every tree possible. We build around trees. We you know, make our sidewalks curvy. People ask us all the time why they're not straight. Well, it's because we're preserving trees as best we can. This is a very important project, and I understand why Mr. Daves went to the mayor, because it is a large project. And I would assume, uh, knowing how things work, that it would have taken a lot longer to get this done if we had had to go through every tree out there to determine if it could be taken down or not. And since this is a bigger project, that's why Mr. Daves went to the mayor to ask him to do this. And since the mayor does have the authority to do it, then he moved forward to do it. And now we find ourselves with this appeal. So um, again, uh, I seconded the motion to affirm the appeal, and I just hope all of my colleagues will, will agree. Thank you. Ready to vote. Been probably motion to second. Any further discussion? No. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Public hearings. Today is a public hearing to consider the application of Christopher Jenkins doing business at Superior Cab Service for a certificate of public convenience and necessity to operate a taxi cab service. Is there anyone here today that would like to have any commentary relative to this public hearing? Public hearing is closed. Thank you. Presentation of petitions and other communications to the you, council. Reggie was, Hill. Was he? You had somebody in. The application. Mm -hmm. Oh, you need to give us. Mr. Jenkins. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Come on. Yes. How y'all doing today? All right. I was um put a, your name and address. Oh, I'm sorry. My name is Christopher Jenkins. I live at 616 Cherokee Street, Mobile, Alabama. I just wanted to. I was trying to work as a cab driver. I wanted to get a. It seemed to me that the ordinary citizens being left out. Everybody's concentrating on the hotels and the airport. So I was trying to get them other options. So that was my reason of trying to open another cab service. Yes, sir. Hey, appreciate you coming down today. All right. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Public hearing is closed. Presentation of petitions and other communications to the council. Reggie Hill.
Thank you, uh, Madam Clerk. Mr. Chairman, members of the council, in the absence of Mayor Stimson, citizens of Mobile, good morning. Uh, Reggie Hill, 200 Government Street. Uh, I rise today uh, to give, I guess, some insight on perspectives from people that I represent. I have the privilege of working with individuals all across the county, not just across the city, and a lot of times they express their opinions and positions about city business to me knowing that I come and articulate that message to our leaders. And I'm appreciative of our leaders as well. I'm appreciative of the opportunity to, to speak before you today. Uh, last week, I started with public safety. And this week is a continuation of that which I feel is important to the city, dealing with the parks and recreation. I want to commend Councilman Williams last week for asking for the delay of that, that contract um, with the Lowe's company regarding the park and recreation. Now, I'll be doing a disservice to the citizens of Mobile if I said that $277,000 is too much to spend for an evaluation plan because it's not. After speaking with the director of uh, Parks and Recreation, that's about a little over a dollar per person in the city to get something together. But what is disturbing to me is the allocation of the funding within that proposal. I'm hoping that the administration would be willing to reopen that opportunity for even local businesses to come in and participate with the evaluation, especially if we are engaged in those centers every week. Um, what was extremely alarming to me of the $277,000 that is being put forth on the table, 230 plus is just for overviewing the process. So we're only spending about $43,000 on the actual enhancement of our parks and recreation centers. We were able to hear from Dr. Floyd this morning. He said, courage to do what's good and fitting. We have to be able to do what is going to be best for our citizens if we want to see the progress sustain itself in the future. And what was really alarming to me, because I deal particularly with young people, and we heard the mayor say this morning about his activities and his plans for his activities yesterday, uh, encouraged him to continue creating equity in all our communities. This is what he said yesterday inspired him to do. Well, why is it that of the $277,000, only 5,250 are being put towards at-risk youth of this entire contract. And we have companies coming in from California, North Carolina, Georgia. We're spending $20,000 on food. When we have people who are engaged in this community every day, know about these centers every day, are concerned not just with the youth, but for recreational uses for adults and seniors as well. And these are young people volunteering to assist those that are older than them. But yet we are able to come to the table as a people to put those ideas forward. So I guess what I'm asking is of the council and the administration is to reevaluate what we're going to do with our centers, reevaluate who we're going to partner with to enhance our centers. If we're so concerned about the public safety, and particularly if we're looking at um, the youth and uprising the crime of that being the reason why we're seeing so much detrimental incidents in the city, investing that little is not going to help eradicate the problem. We're going to have to be able to look at services that are here locally and with people who are actually investing. Not to say that these individuals who have been put on the contract are not capable of coming in and surveying because I hope as the contract states, these six months of meetings would have been able to get to that as well. But you have people who have lived here and who are engaged in the community every day where we don't have to go through that entire process of looking to have surveys and all these things done. I Hill, which is a component of Success for the Future, took a survey of 100 kids throughout the county. And one of the questions asked was, do you want to stay in the city of Mobile once you become an adult? More than 90% of those young people said they do not. And there's no telling of how many people they're actually reflecting when they make that statement, because I'm sure many of their peers feel the same way. And a lot of it, when we ask why, it's because of what is lacking for them. And to me, it's an old cliche saying, but follow the money. And if we're only putting $5,250 out of a nearly $300,000 contract to what we feel is going to be the future of our city, I think we need to reevaluate that. I would like to thank the, uh, the city clerk's office for being um, as open and available for citizens to come forth and review this documentation. A lot of that is, is not preppy to most, most citizens, and a lot of people aren't even understanding how to go through the process. And I want to say to the administration, as I have tried to work with for 
more than a year. I commend you on all those things that are, that are great. All the things that are going well, I commend you and I stand behind and I always be a vocal advocate, whereas I want to be a vocal advocate with the sales tax issue for the administration and the city council. But where we can make improvements, we must be willing to do that for the future of our city. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Yes, sir. Thank you. CIP resolutions being, um, that were held over, if there's no objection, I'll take the four together. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Zero one zero. 01015 authorized master services agreement with Michael Baker International for 2018 Bolton's branch repairs from Davidson School Road to Mont Lamar Drive. 21016 authorized contract with Emerald Coast Striping for application of thermoplastic striping markings and legends on various city of Mobile roadways. 21018 authorized contract with American Tennis Courts for Michael Figures Park Tennis Court repairs and 21019 authorized contract with James H. Adams and Son Construction for 2017 CIP miscellaneous drainage repairs. So moved. Second. Public motion and second. Any discussion? Yes, sir. Mr. Davis. I would just uh, like very quickly to mention 01015, which is a continued uh, improvement on Bolton's branch. Uh, this is an uh, important uh, drainage structure in District 5. Uh, we spent uh, in Nick. 2016, 17, we spent in 2017 about $650,000 uh, rebuilding uh, the upper part of Bolton's branch. Uh, and now we're, we're working uh, downstream. And this is, uh, as I said, an important uh, part of uh, rebuilding Bolton's branch. And this goes from uh, Davidson School Road uh, to Mont Lamar Drive. And I appreciate all the work that uh, Nick and your folks have done to continue this project. Thank you. Probably motion and second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Items passed. Resolutions held over. If there's no objection, I'll take those three together. 01020, authorized non reimbursable agreement for relocation of utility facilities on public right of way with Spire Gulf, Inc. Uh, 21021, authorized contract of MyCore Inc. doing business as MDS Construction for Police Training Academy Agility Course Improvements. 25022, grant easement to Alabama Power for a new <coughs> overhead wire crossing Spring Hill Avenue, allowing for removal of two existing lines. So move. Second. Public motion and second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Items passed. Consent resolutions being introduced for the first time, 37013 through 60038. Motion for the suspension of the rules for immediate consideration of resolution 37013 through 60038. Second. I have a motion and second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Items passed. There's no objection. I'll take the first four together, 37013 recommend approval to the ABC Board for issuance of a restaurant retail liquor license for the Dublin Irish Pub and Eatery on Osho Road, 37023. Recommend approval to the ABC Board for issuance of a retail beer table wine on off premises license for the Cheese Cottage on St. Louis Street, 37024. Recommend approval to the ABC Board for issuance of a retail beer table wine off premises only license for Publix on North Florida Street, 37025, recommend approval to the ABC Board for issuance of a restaurant retail liquor license for Boyd's Royal Night Bar and Grill on Government Boulevard. So moved. Second. second. Probably motion and second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Times pass. 58026, declare we noxious, group 1575. So moved. Second. Probably motion and second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Item passes. 60027, approve award of special bonus to Charles Dewberry as part of the Mayor's Incentive Program. So moved. Second. Is there a second? Second. <laughs> any, any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Item passes. 60038. Resolution opposing House Bill 110 and Senate Bill 130. Second. second. Public motion and second. Any discussion? Not all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Item passes. 
CIP resolutions being introduced for the first time, 21028 through 21033. We face suspension of rules for immediate consideration of, of the following resolutions, 21028, 029, 030, 032, and uh, 31, 33, and 34, they all for one week by council rules. Wait a minute, you got, I think you okay, got it first. Um, Go go back over those. Oh no! I, I, right, you're right. For me, <laughs> consideration. You, I got it reversed. Me, consideration. Twenty one zero three one, twenty one zero three three, and twenty one zero three four. And the rest for a little. For second. Yeah. Problem. Motion is second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Items passed. No. Um, okay. Over the three. Okay. All right. So we have 21031 authorized contract with Burt Kleinpeter for 2018 CIP citywide guardrail repair. So moved. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? 21033 authorized contract with Dobson Sheet Metal and Roofing and Specialties for Matthews Park Reroofing of Facilities. So moved. Second. Probably motion to second. Any discussion? Yes, sir. Um, Mr. Davis. I would just like to say that this is an important uh, improvement to the uh, facilities at Matthews Park. Uh, Matthews Park is a big park. It's used by uh, the citizens all over the city of Mobile. And uh, so I'm happy to provide uh, this, uh, this, this uh, upgrade to this park that, as I said, serves all the citizens of Mobile. Thank you, Mr. Davis. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? I am passed. Resolution has been introduced for the first time 21034 through 37037. By Council Rules, these resolutions will lay for one week. Announcements um, reminder to the Council that uh, the training is today. Uh, immediately following this meeting, please report directly to the briefing room, formerly known as the Old City Smart Room on the first floor. We'll start today with Mr. Williams. I have none, thank you. Mr. Small. Uh, thank you, Vice President. I would like to uh, remind the uh, citizens um, of District 3 that this coming Saturday, uh, January the 20th, um, the Our Lady of Lord Parish, along with the uh, Knights of Columbus and the Parkway Senior Citizen Foundation, is having their ninth annual spaghetti uh, dinner. And this is a fundraising for the uh, Parkway Senior Citizen. And I said they try to um, get some uh, things done around the center. Uh, they will be having the spaghetti dinner at $7, including the spaghetti dinner will be a salad, bread, and dessert, and a tea. Also, there will be a salad auction. Again, this will be this coming Saturday from 11.30 a.m. until 1.30 p.m. at Our Lord's uh, Parish Hall which is located off of Dolphin Island uh, Parkway. Um, also on next Tuesday, uh, January the 23rd, um, at 1 o'clock p.m., uh, the <coughs> Vice President had asked for us to um, call a committee together, which will include myself, um, Joe Daves, and also uh, John Williams, uh, to talk about the extension of the penny on the CIP ordinance. Again, this would be next Tuesday on the ninth floor at 1 o'clock p.m. Uh, thank you so much. Mr. Richardson. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yes, I would like to announce that we have several items on the agenda today that would have a direct effect on District 1. One, we um, approved the liquor license for Publix. We expect Publix to open the latter part of February or the early part of March unless the rain otherwise they different. They've had 102 rainy days and they've been set back tremendously. But the new timetable will be, from last I heard, it's gonna be the last of February or the first, around the first of March. Also on the agenda, we approved today uh, money uh, to repair the tennis court at Figures Park. And while we're doing that, that court is going to be retrofitted for pickleball. 
Uh, so that could, today the contract is approved. We expect the contract to be out there not long from now. Also approved on uh, agenda today was money for street striping. And the streets in District 1 that's going to be striped, we have Sage Avenue, Old Government Street, First, First Avenue, Ocean Road, Moffitt Road, Berkeley Avenue, Imogene Street, I-65 Service Road, Springfield Avenue, and Main Street. The big one, we're getting ready to keep the ditch closure effort in Trinity Gardens going. So today we approve the engineering contract. The purpose of the engineering contract is to define what part of the roadway is the city's and what part of the roadway is property it belongs to the property owners. So if we start closing the ditch, we know how far to go. The following streets uh, will be affected. Warsaw Avenue, and as you know, we've already done part of Warsaw Avenue. This is the other part of Warsaw Avenue. Esau Avenue, we've already done one part of Esau Avenue. This is the other part of Esau Avenue. And we are adding Harper Avenue, Greenback Drive, and Ridgeway Street. This, this, is where the, this is where the next focus is going to be on ditch closure. We intend to keep the project going. And uh, the next, this is the engineering contract. It'll probably take six months or more to get this done. And by that time, it will be time to get the work done on these streets. And we, are, we will identify another group of streets after that. Thank you. Well, on no, I would like to close out. You know, we, yesterday was, uh, we celebrated Dr. King's birthday. And I would just like to uh, cite a couple of quotes here from Dr. King, he said, truth, though crushed to the earth, will rise again. That right may often yield to might, but right will win. That the ultimate measure of a man is not how he stands in moments of comfort and convenience, but where he stands in times of challenges and controversy. That darkness cannot drive out darkness, light can. Hate cannot drive out hate, love can. That love is the only force capable of transforming an enemy into a friend. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Richardson. Mr. Davis? No, no announcements. Mrs. Rich? I'd just like to remind everybody about the um, police chili cook-off. It's a good way to see police in a whole nother light as they compete with each other making chili. And that will be on Saturday, January 20th from 10 to 2 at Cathedral Square. And I imagine it's weather permitting. They've already changed date once before, but we'll hope for good weather. And in the meantime, watch the weather that's due to come in, I think, this afternoon and last through tomorrow. So drive safely, take care, and stay warm. Mrs. Gregory? Thank you. Um, just one announcement. I have a district meeting coming up on February 27th. It will be at the Vision Center, which is located at the corner of Forest Hill Drive and Princeton Drive. Uh, it will be at 6 o'clock. We'll have a number of guest speakers, but the focus will be on the widening of Ziegler, on Project Shield, and um, also an update on certainly crime in the area, along with um, the CIP. So those will be my three focus areas. So again, it will be February 27th at the Vision Center at the corner of Forest Hill Drive and um, Princeton Drive. Thank you. I, I just have a, a couple of announcements. On last week, uh, I had the honor and privilege of participating uh, in the National Baptist Convention Midwinter Board Meeting, along with Councilman Small and Mayor Stimson. Uh, it was very well attended. Uh, it's quite an honor to have that large of a, a contingency of, of National Baptist ministers in our city. I've heard way, rave reviews about uh, the hospitality and the food that they experienced. Uh, just a good time was had by all. I want to congratulate uh, Reverend Cleveland McFarland, who was the host committee chairperson, uh, Dr. Jerry Young, who's the convention chairperson, Dr. Vernon Swift, uh, who's our state convention chairperson, on allowing and working with our city, the uh, Visit Mobile staff, 
in making certain that it was a great time had by all. Uh, left there and went Friday to the honorary renaming of uh, Glennon Avenue to uh, Dr. Yvonne Kennedy uh, Avenue. And that's where uh, I had this mishap with my knee. Mm. Ladies coming up to speak, she kicked the cone over. It looked like she kicked it right in front of my right leg. Uh, but I'm not holding that against her. She's offered <laughs> chicken noodle soup, offered medical bills. It was an accident, uh, but I was determined to make it to church on Sunday, and I was determined to make it to council meeting today. Uh, and I want to recognize a gentleman. Uh, his name is Henry Hank Parham. Never met him. Our connection was totally through uh, Facebook, but he often sent me encouraging commentary something was wrong, he let me know about it. If something was great, he let me know about it. Uh, Mr. Parham passed on New Year's Day, and his wife, I figured I had not heard from him, and I wrote her just asking how was he doing, and she told me uh, that he passed on New Year's Day, and he was laid to rest at the Spanish Fort Alabama uh, Veterans Memorial Cemetery. Only uh, her immediate family was able to make it due to some inclement weather. Well, I just want to recognize Mr. Parham's death, uh, his contributions to our district and to the city, and to let her know that she has our, our full thoughts and prayers uh, as she goes through her hours, weeks, and months of bereavement. Any further announcements from the administration or the council? Yes, sir. Mr. Yes, President, sir. I forgot about this one. Uh, I, I just learned here recently that um, that I have been appointed by the National League of Cities to the National Transportation and Infrastructure Board. It's sort of unusual because Councilman Manzi was appointed on the board when we were in with Charleston. Yes, sir. And we concluded that no two people from the same city would be appointed on a national board, and we were wrong. Wrong. <laughs> so, I've, I've been notified that I am on the National Transportation and Infrastructure Board of the National League of Cities. Congratulations, Councilman Richardson. Mr. Vice President. Yes, sir. May I offer my congratulations and felicitations to both of you on your appointment to these important committees. <laughs> Mr. Davis, we appreciate it. And thank you to Mr. Hare Austin. Uh, you've been helping me the last, uh, well, today, and hopefully will probably be with me the, uh, the rest of my uh, recuperation period. Appreciate all of you all's patience. Do I hear a motion? So moved. Sec is there a second? second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Meetings adjourned.